Hi hey everyone, in this video we're going to be doing a brief review of the structure and function of important organelles in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, and we're going to be going into the differences between plant and animal cells as well. Stay tuned! Organelles are structures within cells that have specialized functions, and you probably remember a lot of organelles from previous science classes, but we're going to focus today on some of the main ones you'll need to be able to know and recognize by picture, function, or name. So let's look at these two pictures. We have the nucleus, drawn simply here, a plasma membrane, which is the surrounding double layer around the cell, which if we zoom in closely, we see is a phospholipid bilayer. The cell wall with plant cells and certain prokaryotic cells, and mitochondria, this oval with the squiggly line, our vacuoles here and here, chloroplasts, again only in plant cells, and ribosomes, represented frequently by little dots. Sometimes you'll see a mitochondrion drawn very uh, technically, and they look a little bit more like this than the simplified drawing here, but sometimes you'll just see an oval with a squiggly line, so you need to be able to recognize both types of pictures. And you'll also, potentially see a chloroplast drawn more like this than the one I have in my picture. These are stacks of thylakoids, which are an important part of the chloroplast. Don't really need to focus on that for the biology EOC, just be able to recognize chloroplast as an important organelle with these kind of stack-like structures within a plant cell only. So getting back into the differences between animal and plant cells, which you might remember again from other science classes, plant cells have cell walls or and they look kind of like these geometric shapes. Animal cells do not. Plant cells also have chloroplasts chloroplasts where animal cells do not, and plant cells tend to have one large vacuole for water storage where animals can have smaller vacuoles or multiple vacuoles. So make sure you recognize those main differences between plant and animal cells. That's, those aren't the only differences, but those are key important ones. So recognizing our organelles by picture, again, here's our simplified mitochondrion. This is for energy, so you need to be able to understand that the mitochondria is where the cellular energy is created or made in a process called cellular respiration. You need to know more than just the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Here are simple circles with kind of a blank space in them. That would be a vacuole, which again is for storage. Our ribosomes are represented by little dots, and this is where proteins are made. Our nucleus is going to be in the center of the cell. Sometimes you'll see chromosomes if they're, the DNA is condensed represented in them, but it's going to store our DNA or our genetic information in eukaryotic organisms, and we'll get to that in a second. Our cell membrane is going to be represented, if we zoom in closely, by these this phospholipid bilayer, and its purpose is to provide a semi-permeable barrier, letting some things in and some things out of the cell in order for the cell to maintain homeostasis and do everything that it needs to do. Our cell wall is going to provide structure and support, another layer of protection of the cell, again not in animal cells, and it's going to be kind of geometric in shape. And our chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis, only in plant cells, so we're not going to see these in animal cells. Now if we look back at our plant and animal cells, these are both eukaryotic organisms, meaning they have a true nucleus or they have a nucleus and other membrane bound organelles. So organelles like the mitochondria, organelles like vacuoles, and these are generally larger and more complex. Prokaryotic organisms are more primitive. We think they evolved first. They typically only have a few key features. So they're very simple, they're very, very small. They're more abundant on Earth than eukaryotic cells, but um, they're very different. So in prokaryotic cells, we do not have any of those membrane-bound organelles. We don't have a mitochondria, we don't have vacuoles, we don't have a nucleus. Instead, the DNA is just free-floating within the cell in a feature we call the nucleoid. We do have ribosomes because all cells do make proteins and have to do protein synthesis. We do have a cell membrane to contain the cytoplasm and the essential functions of that and the essential features of that cell. Um, and that's about it. Sometimes there'll be external features like our flagella, which is for movement, or cilia, also for movement. Those are small hair-like structures. I'll show you a picture of one of those later. And those are, those can exist in prokaryotic organisms, but Again, not all prokaryotic cells have those. So again, prokaryotic organisms, much more simple, no nucleus, no membrane bound organelles, very, very simple features. Plant and animal cells are both eukaryotic. 